Welcome again. Right now in our readings, we are at John chapter 6, verses 16 through to 21. This is Jesus walking on the water. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea. They entered into the boat and were going over the sea to Capernaum, or Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not come to them. The sea was tossed by a great wind blowing. Hmm. You notice when there's a storm in your life, sometimes, if not all the time, when you're walking with the Lord, that's just setting the stage for something good to happen. When therefore they had rowed about 25 or 30 stadia, that would be about five to six kilometers or three to four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea. Let's go on over to Job chapter 9 verse 8. Job chapter 9 verse 8 says, He alone stretches out the heavens and treads on the waves of the sea. What an awesome fulfillment of that verse. Let's continue. And drawing near to the boat, they were afraid. So Jesus was coming, walking on the water, and walking up and drawing near to the boat. But he said to them, It is I, or literally. Now this is what you need to get. This is what you need to understand. In the original manuscripts, it literally says, Jesus said, I am. Now, that is a very, very, very powerful thing. For those of you who uh, may not remember, those of you who do not connect the dots here, let me help you. When Moses met God at the burning bush, he asked God, what is your name? You know, if I go back to the children of Israel, if I go back to the, to the nation of Israel, they're going to ask me, who, what God were you speaking to? What's the name of the God, of your God? What's, what's, your, what's, what's the name of God? And God said, I am that I am. Go tell them that I am has sent you. Okay? So that's the title of God. That's the name of God. I am. When Jesus was walking on the sea in the middle of a storm, after the disciples rode for quite a long ways, okay, you think about it, five, six kilometers, three or four miles, that's a, that's a good long way to row in a storm, to row by hand in a storm. That's a good long way. And that's another point too. A lot of times God waits. He doesn't show up right at the beginning of a storm, he waits until you've worked at it. He, he, for some reason, sometimes he lets you struggle a little bit. You know, I think there's a reason for that. But here, he let them struggle a little bit. You know, oh, more than a little bit. They rode by hand, you know, three to four miles. That's, that's a good long ways. And then he comes walking on the sea. And they were afraid, obviously. Whoa! You know, and Jesus said to them, I am am. Don't be afraid. That, my friend, is one of the most powerful things that Jesus has ever said, ever. Because in so doing, when Jesus said that, he was proclaiming himself to be the great I am. I am. Don't be afraid. They were willing, therefore, to receive him into the boat. Oh, I would be willing too. I would be very willing to receive Jesus into the boat after you've experienced that and after you've heard Jesus say that. Immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. So here is such a powerful, powerful and such a supernatural experience. First of all, they were in a storm, a natural storm. It's, it, a lot of times when you have a supernatural experience, it starts out in a natural storm, if you know what I mean. They were in a natural storm and they were, you know, they were having a hard time. There was some hardship they were going through there. In a storm, perhaps they were thinking, how are we going to make it through this? They're rowing, rowing, rowing. Are we going to even have the strength to get across here? 
three to four miles, five to six kilometers of rowing. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it seems like Jesus appears to them walking on the water. And they were terrified, obviously. And the first thing Jesus said is the first thing that God said is the first thing. Let me let me put it this way. The first thing Jesus said to his disciples, I am, is what Jesus said to Moses in the burning bush. I am that I am. Go tell them that I am has sent you. <laughs> That's powerful. And then they received him into the boat. And as soon as Jesus got into the boat, the boat was at the land. There was an instant teleportation happened there. Okay. God's able to do anything. Okay. And this happened time and time again in the scriptures. And uh, you know, you know what? I have heard several testimonies of this kind of stuff happening to people, uh, literally happening to people in this day and in this age where they are instantly teleported. And I'm not just talking about one person because, you know, one person, you can't always go on the testimony or the word of one person because, hey, you know, they could be delusional. They could be having a bad trip. Um, but, but there are people who have testimonies of being instantly teleported by the power of God in groups, okay, two or more people, okay? And it's just an awesome thing. So yes, God still does miracles today. And yes, God is so powerful and so great. So give him all the praise and seek him. You will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. You know, I'll tell you something. If you are bored in your walk with the Lord, you're not really walking with the Lord. <laughs> you know, if you're bored as a Christian, you need to walk with the Lord. Put it that way. You cannot walk with the Lord. You cannot walk with God and be bored. If you're bored, there's something seriously wrong with, with, with you. <laughs> okay. Um, so press into him. Pray as much as you can. Read the scriptures and believe. And of course, with that word, believe, also comes obedience. You can't say, I believe, if you don't obey. Yeah. Students cannot say that they believe in their rabbi if they disobey their rabbi. This doesn't work that way. If you believe in God, you obey God. If you believe, you obey. So as you go, obey and God will bless you abundantly. Thanks again for watching.